we're here, uh, actually right now we're in Stuttgart, Germany, uh, the head of our uh, company, for the launch of the DT12, the Detroit DT12 uh, automated manual transmission. We visited the Gaggenau plant where the, tra the transmission we've built for the first two years. Um, and then we also visited um, some of the ride and drive areas to see how the transmission would work so we all get a chance to, uh, to drive one. So, uh, so tell us about what makes this transmission uh, different from what we've seen in uh, North America up to this point. In North America we're used to driving manuals, um, which means you're shifting all the time. The automated manual functions kind of like a manual in, in terms of the way the mechanics work, but like an automatic in the way that the driver uh, interacts with it. So there's a shifter on the stock, you use that to select reverse or drive, and then the transmission, the electronics between the engine and the transmission do all the work. They select the gear you should be in, they select, uh, you know, put you in top gear the most times, they make sure that you're hitting that sweet spot of fuel economy so you can get the best fuel economy you can, and more consistently because with today's lower gear ratios and the way that the uh, steps happen in the transmission, you'd have to be shifting a lot more that for a driver with a, you know, with a shifter would be very uh, difficult, and this does a lot of those things for you. So I understand that this is actually based on a transmission that's been, uh, Daimler has been using on Mercedes trucks in Europe. How has it gone over here in Europe? Yes, actually the, uh, the base transmission, similar to what we did with the DD15 when we launched it, we launched that in North America first, and then we brought that technology to uh, Europe to use. We're doing the reverse here. They've been using this automated manual transmission since uh, the last two years, and now we're bringing that transmission over here. As I said earlier, we'll be building that here in Gaginal for the first two years, and then in two years, we'll to 2015-ish, we'll be bringing that transmission, the assembly of it, to our uh, facility in Detroit, Michigan. So we're kind of doing the reverse of what we did with the engine, but uh, we're all very excited to share our, um, our global uh, network and all of our engineering prowess throughout the, the regions. And Dino makes a lot of uh, truck transmissions at this uh, plant in Gaginal that we saw yesterday. Yes, they do. The Gaginal plant was quite impressive. Um, it actually started in 1894, and I think they had made their 10 millionth transmission sometime during this year. So they are quite the experts at building transmissions. So in Europe, I know there are a lot of uh, automated manuals have become much more popular. What's going to drive the adoption of them in North America, where right now it's, what, about 5 or 5% or so adoption? Yeah, it's probably automated manuals in uh, North America now are probably 5 to 10%, um, maybe 15% penetration. There's a couple things that are really going to drive it. One is um, we used it, you know, when we first had power windows and, and power, uh, power door locks and things like that and, and power steering, air conditioning, all the drivers are like, no, I don't want that. But once they started trying and they got used to it, they really liked it. And we feel that this technology is the same. It's really going to make their lives easier. You'll be less fatigued driving. It's easier to drive. Again, it's safer because you've got two hands in the wheel, two eyes in the road. There's some other technological things, um, such as, like I mentioned, lower gear ratios, which means you're going to have to shifting more. Um, some of the downspeeding technology that's being brought to market is going to um, provide better fuel economy. But with that, you're going to have to do a lot more work with the shifting. So with this transmission, the way it works with the engine, it's going to make all those things happen and make it much easier for the driver to use. And I understand there are also benefits in the way that it integrates with having the whole Detroit powertrain as opposed to just an automated manual transmission. Yeah, absolutely. If you look at um, what we do with this transmission in terms of the communication between the engine and the transmission, you couldn't do that unless you built both of those, unless it was proprietary products. Um, essentially, we allow it to talk to each other freely. Um, we can look at our engine's fuel maps, decide what's the best uh, range to be in, what's the best gear, essentially that sweet spot. And, and it can look at, it uses a load sensor and a speed sensor um, and a grade sensor to say, what's the best place for this transmission engine combination to be at at any given moment? Um, and you couldn't really do that if the, the engine and the transmission were from separate companies. So the Detroit uh, DT12 transmission, when it initially launches, which is right now, we started production here. In May, on May 6th, it'll first go into the Freightliner Cascadia Evolution, um, and then that'll be made up with the DD13 later, which would also be in the Evolution, and then May of next year, um, it'll made up to the DD16. The, and the DT12, I've got to go into a couple of the benefits here. There's really a lot of things like skip shifting. So we talked about it being a proprietary technology. Skip shifting will allow you to go from first to third to fifth to seventh or second to fourth to eighth, something like that. Um, so it really gets you into top gear faster, and it really feels like a very powerful uh, piece of equipment when you first start going because it's going to get you going as fast as you can and get you into top gear. It also uses what we call ECOS. And ECOS is essentially when you hit a grade that's enough of a, down, a downgrade where it can um, essentially disconnect the engine of the transmission, it runs the engine at idle, and it coasts down a hill. 
And that alone will save you a ton of fuel economy. You, you, we did a, um, a test where we went from San Diego to Cleveland, North Carolina, and it was about, I think it's about 3,200 miles, something like that, and 700 of those miles was spent in Ecos. So that's 700 miles of the engine, instead of being at 13, 1,400 RPMs, is down around you know, 600 RPMs. So that alone, the slower the engine goes, the better fuel economy. Those qualities, those, those features are really going to help the driver and also the, uh, you know, the fuel academy and the, the, the folks that want to make some money. And uh, I understand automated manuals cost a little more than a manual, but uh, you're looking at a total cost of ownership uh, proposition here, right? Absolutely. I mean, the, the, both for the package, right? So if you take the entire Detroit powertrain, you're going to get a cost of ownership, a TCO um, benefit. Um, one, from fuel economy. Two, from safety. Um, you're not going to have as many issues with safety. And then three, there's other things like driver training, driver retention, because it's easier to drive this product. So you don't have to spend as much time driving. With the less fatigue, drivers like it more. You're going to retain drivers more. So there's a large uh, total cost of ownership uh, benefit from this product and the entire Detroit powertrain.